Hello and welcome to Rhino's Orioles Report. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. So, we talk about the series between the Baltimore Orioles and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Home opener and opening series at home for the Pittsburgh Pirates. A little bit extra juice for them in the whole series, I think. Did not go the Orioles' way. Orioles were able to get the win in the first game of the series, but the next two games, coming down to the wire, Saturday losing in extra innings and Sunday losing in the ninth inning. Disappointing, but at the same time, highly competitive baseball games. The entire series. So, it's not like they were never in competition for a win there. You do like that. You can see I am on MassInSports.com. Let's take you to the box score for Game 1 from PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Baltimore Orioles 5, Pittsburgh Pirates 2. Offense came to play in the first game in a much better way than we had seen some of the other games. Henderson leading off again. Henderson Rutschman 1-2 would appear to be the theme here. Started last year. I think initially Brandon Hyde started with Rutschman leading off and Henderson number two. And eventually saw what Gunnar Henderson's capabilities were and moved him to the leadoff and Rutschman in number two. Since Cedric Mullins has kind of fallen out of favor as the leadoff hitter. Even though Mullins is more of that prototypical leadoff guy. Henderson, 2 for 5, 2 runs scored with an RBI, did strike out once. Rutschman, 2 for 5 with an RBI. Oddly enough for Rutschman, 2 strikeouts. It's not exactly something Adley Rutschman does a lot. Pirates pitchers were able to get him twice. Pirates got some pretty good pitchers. Anything, Pirates doing some rebuilding of their own, maybe a year behind the Orioles, putting that in perspective. So they got some good talent on the Pittsburgh Pirate organization. Santander, two for five with an RBI, only struck out once. Ryan Mountcastle, one for five, no runs or RBIs, struck out twice. Ryan O'Hearn getting the DH in this one. Two for four, RBI score to run. Mullins, one for four, RBI score to run. What did I say for O'Hearn? O'Hearn was two for four. Is that what I said? I don't know, but you know, two for four from O'Hearn and then a one for, four, one for four for Mullins. So, nice to see that Mullins, while he may not be getting, you know, hitting around a 300 mark like you would want for, let's say, a leadoff hitter, he is contributing it enough offensively that he's he's going to be in the lineup a lot. And he's made a few really good defensive plays in this series. One diving, hard charging a ball, coming almost a, maybe more towards left center field. And he's playing more shaded towards right center field. Coming all the way across to his right, making a dive. Catching the ball, and I think he actually did one going the other way, too. And, what was it yesterday? Yesterday, ball hit deep, hitting off the top of the wall, making a decent throw into the infield. He did miss a cutoff, man, but Mateo was right there backing up where he should be. Good was a good, strong throw, something we don't really see for Mullins that much, or at least haven't in the past, maybe more recently has and Mateo was able to throw the guy out at for at not not at first but at home plate so it's good that Mullins is getting a hit you know and at least staying around 250 because that means he's going to be in a lineup and we need that because his defense is one of the tops in the league if not the tops Westberg mm, 0 for 3 Though, Westberg's been in the lineup a lot. Not too many days off for Westberg because he has been hitting well. Kowser in the lineup again. 
one for two. Did strike out once. Hayes, late replacement because Kowser bats left, Hayes bats right. Hayes got two at bats, 0 for 2, also struck out once. You hate that Hayes may be grabbing some bench more often than not because he is a pretty good defender out there in left field, but sometimes you got to put the guy in that's going to get a hit every once in a while. Arias, 1 for 4. Yay, finally! No more offer for the season for Ramon Arias. He has a hit and he scored a run. Good job. Mount Castle Santander doubles O'Hearn triple. Yeah. A triple. Not a hundred percent sure I'd call it a triple. There was some miscommunication between two guys converging in the outfield, so I don't know that I would have scored it a triple. I think I would have scored it a double with an error because the fielders were there. They made a mistake and didn't communicate well enough to each other. So I probably would have given him an error. No stolen bases. Did leave some people on base. Come to the pitching side of it. Grayson Rodriguez got to start in this one. Great first six innings by Grayson Rodriguez. I thought it was just as good as his first start, if not maybe a little better. Because he didn't you know, have more of a, what's the word, maybe a more challenging lineup to face. But Rodriguez was about at 90 pitches. Brandon Hyde decided to send him out for the seventh inning. You know, gives up a home run, then strikes a guy out. And then Brandon Hyde takes him out. Which, you know I'm not a fan of. But to a certain extent, Brandon Hyde did push Rodriguez, sent him out there again, you know, for a, a, an extra inning. And as soon as Grayson Rodriguez gives up the home run, Brandon Hyde didn't take him out. Old Brandon Hyde would have taken him out immediately. New Brandon Hyde is letting the leash go out a little bit longer. Letting letting him more slack in the leash? I don't know. I don't have a dog. But at the same time, he's at 90 pitches. He gave you six really fantastic innings. I don't know that it was a great decision to send him out there for the seven. I, personal preference, though, from the guy sitting in his basement making a video talking about baseball instead of, you know, sitting in a major league dugout calling the shots. So, in total, Grayson Rodriguez, six and one-third of an inning pitched, six hits, two runs, two of them earned, two walks, only two walks, which is very good, seven strikeouts. So... Think about that. You don't send him out there for the seventh inning. He gives up five hits, one run, two walks, six strikeouts. Like, I... <sighs> Take your chips and leave the table, man. At that point, <sighs> don't go for one more round, one more bet. No. However, Coulomb comes in to relieve Grayson Rodriguez, Danny Coulomb. Gets the final two outs in the seventh inning. No hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. Cano in the eighth inning because he's your primary setup man. Kulam is like the second secondary setup man. I don't know if we really define positions in that. One full inning pitch for Cano. No hits, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. In comes Craig Kimbrell. Probably going to. Fumble on that. Craig Kimbrell. Sure how many times I'm going to say Craig Krimble. <sighs> Bit of a tongue twister. One full inning pitch. The ninth inning. No hits. No runs. No walks. Two strikeouts. First save of his Orioles career for Mr. Kimbrell. And he did it in relatively short work. 13 pitches. 
Not as good as, you know, Cano with 11 pitches for a full inning. But, I mean, 13 pitches for your save with two strikeouts. Yeah, I mean, it works for me. That's great. Seemed like a great acquisition in my book. I don't know what you people out there are talking about that we shouldn't have picked up Craig Kimbrell, but okay. Let's come to game two, Saturday. Baltimore Orioles four, Pittsburgh Pirates five. You can see here in the went to the eleventh inning. Baltimore Orioles didn't get no runs in there. Well, that was bad English. Goose egg for the Orioles in the 11th inning, but a one in the 11th inning for the Pirates. So, that's what that was. Orioles couldn't get that extra runner in, but the Pirates were able to. Essentially, what that boils down to. Now, take a look at this lineup. Woo-hoo! For a minute there, Brandon Hyde thought this was a National League rules game where pitchers are batting. No, it's just one of the, I mean, 11 inning game, man. You kind of got to, you know, flip guys in and out of the lineup, move your DH in the catcher. Because, of course, you, your primary catcher was DHing in this. Can't have a full day off. You know, I hate that. And one thing that would be removed was that when you want to pinch run or pinch hit for McCann, you can just. Send Adelie Rutschman into the game instead of having to do all this crazy stuff with your pitchers being in the lineup. Gunnar Henderson 0 for 4. Adley Rutschman 0 for 3. With an RBI and a walk. So, combined 0 for 7, 2 walks, 1 RBI for your top 2 guys. Yeah, they do that a little too many more times than I would like. Come to the Mount Castle spot in the lineup, and you can see a bunch of pitchers being thrown in there. 0 for 5. Two strikeouts. Well, you're not gonna, you're not gonna win too many ball games where your 1, 2, and 3 hitters get no hits. Need to change that. But again, the Pittsburgh Pirates pitch really well in this series. Santander, 0 for 4. Sure as hell ain't gonna win no games if you're one, two, three, four guys don't get a hit. I mean that's that's bad. Santander did walk though, walked and scored a run. Struck out twice. Westberg, two for five. Finally, somebody gets a hit. Of course you had to wait to the five spot. Played third and second base in this one. 2 for 5. Did score twice. Also struck out once. Austin Hayes. 0 for 3. Though, he did get an RBI. So, that counts. While it was, while he did get an out on the play, it was an out that netted you a run. You'll take that. I'll gladly give up a run, give up an out to get a run. O'Hearn did come in to pinch hit late. Again, Hayes is a right-handed hitter. O'Hearn a left-handed hitter. O'Hearn one for two. Mullins, 0 for three, but yet two RBIs. So again, same thing as Hayes. Trading out for runs, outs for runs there. You'll, you'll take that. James McCann, 0 for 3. Happened far too often. A very low hit total for the Orioles on Saturday. Colt Kowser did pinch hit for McCann late, 0 for 1. And then you see Kimbrell in there in a spot. And then, of course, Kimbrell's not going to go play catcher or ended up being a Ramon Arias going in third. Again, crazy. Switching and mashing up of the lineup. Craziness. Very hard to follow. Jorge Mateo, one for three. Did strike out once. Tony Kemp ends up pinch hitting. 0 for one, but does score a run. Orioles had four hits. 
four hits and three walks. You're lucky you got four runs. I mean, you four base hits, three walks, and you got four runs. You're lucky. Really. I mean, that, that's just luck. <sighs> Doubles. Mateo and Westberg had a double each. Stolen bases. Henderson actually stole two bases. Mad that he didn't get a hit, so he decided to swipe two bags. It works. Mullins won. So, right as of right now, Gunnar Henderson has more stolen bases than Cedric Mullins. Might be the only time that that happens during the season. I bet you Mullins is pissed now. I would be. Tyler Wells, not a great outing for Tyler Wells, but not bad. He did go five and a third innings pitched. Again, Brandon Hyde trying to push starters a little bit, get a little bit more length out of them. Seven hits, three runs, three of them earned, two walks, three strikeouts. Man, need Johnny Means to get stretched out. I mean, it's not a bad outing by Wells, but I mean, it's bad when your offense only gets four hits. Dylan Tate, nice to see Mr. Tate come back to the game and at least what? How many outings has he had? I think this was at least his third outing. Two thirds of an innings pitch, no hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Zeros across the board, which you'll you'll take that. It's good. Stack appearances like that, especially coming off of an injury that kept him out for a long time. Aiken, nice to see what Aiken is doing this year. So far, performing very nicely. One full inning pitched, gave up one hit, no runs, no walks, struck out two. Very good. Mr. Webb came in after Aiken. Also another inning pitched, also only gave up one hit, also... Didn't give a run or a walk and struck out two. Bullpen showing that they are the strength of this team. Until now. Because <sighs> you can see the Orioles were winning for a time. Or were they? They tied it up. Okay, they tied it up here. I don't remember where the hell we were at. That's right. Kimbrell came in with a tie. So Kimbrell comes in after Webb. Tie game at this point. Full inning for Kimbrell. No hits, no runs, no walks. One strikeout. Orioles ended up getting the... Yeah, they see they got their tying run in the ninth. And they were able to move up that extra runner in the 10th and actually take the lead in the 10th. And then so here comes in Mike Bauman to try to save the game, close out the game. You can see he has a blown save. Now, the word was that the bullpen was a little overused. Mm, I guess, possibly, maybe, however. And that's why Bauman is in this position instead of, let's say, Coulomb because Brandon Hyde wanted to stay away from Coulomb. Though he ended up using Coulomb when Bauman got into trouble, so I don't I'm sure I completely understand why you don't just go with Coulomb. Because Coulomb comes in with a stupidly ridiculous jam and, get, and, and gets out of it somehow. <sighs> Bauman does. Bauman doesn't record an out. He does give up a hit. You can see he gives up a run, but not an earned run. Now that's not a due to an error. That is because of the extra runner. The extra runner isn't charged as an earned run, but it is classified as a run. So run, but not an earned run. Does give up two walks. So you notice how many people are on base now. For when Coulomb comes in, who supposedly Brandon Hyde didn't want to use, but then used him anyway. I, I mean, I, I know I'm going to use my hindsight, hindsight joke here. So yeah, I mean, hide, hindsight is 2020. 
should have just used Coulomb anyway. I mean, especially if, oh, I wanted to stay away from him. Got it. At this point, you should have just stayed away from him. I mean, I don't, use him or don't use him. <laughs> you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. You have no idea. I mean, it could be a blowout. Use Coulomb now. He's, he'll be fine. Coulomb does come in even with the bases loaded. No hits, no runs, no walks. One strikeout. And Mr. Heasley, still a tie game at this point because you got nobody else except Cano in the bullpen. Actually, on the roster. They use everybody in the bullpen except for Cano. <sighs> Craziness. Mr. Heasley... Did record an out, but allowed a hit. And with the extra runner on base, gives up the run, but not an earned run. So, Orioles lose in the 11th inning. Very disappointing, but hard-fought game. Literally emptying the tank. There's one man out there in the bullpen. Cano sitting there looking around like, where'd all my friends go? <laughs> yeah. Come to Sunday's game, Baltimore Orioles 2, Pittsburgh Pirates 3. Henderson 0 for 4, 3 strikeouts. You may look at this and say, well, Gunnar Henderson looks like a terrible player. Again, it, Pittsburgh Pirate pitching made him look like a terrible hitter. Be perfectly honest, from what I saw from Pirates pitching. They, they got some guys there. They're going to look really good in a couple years if they don't already look really good. Rutschman one for four. Finally, one of them gets a hit. Did score a run. Uh, Mount Castle in there in a three hole. Three for four. One RBI. One run scored. Santander one for four with an RBI. Westberg 0 for four. Hayes 0 for three. Mullins 0 for three. McCann 0 for three. Mateo 1 for three. Okay. Mountcastle and Mateo. Mountcastle with two doubles. Mateo with with one double. Mateo's off to a good start here. He really is with the bat. Errors had a couple errors in this one. Dean Kramer throwing error. Trying to throw back to second. Yeah, on a comebacker, trying to throw to second base. Very disappointing, but happens. Gunnar Henderson throwing error. Talk about that when I start getting down to the end of the game. Because that's really where it was. And you don't really fault him there. I mean, he did not make the play. But it's really the situation, really. Dean Kramer, with the bullpen used, heavily used. Mr. Kramer goes out there and throws up pretty much zeros for seven innings. The best performance as I've ever seen Dean Kramer do. And he only threw 91 pitches. Five hits given up. One run, but not an earned run. Though it doesn't make sense when it was him that made the error that allowed the run to score. I still don't understand that. Like, why is that not an earned run by the pitcher? The pitcher was the run that made the error. I could see it if, you know, another fielder made the error. But the pitcher... Made the error. So why is it not an earned run on that pitcher? However, still don't agree with that. Big old fat zero in the walk column. That's fantastic. Six strikeouts. Again, fantastic performance. You really hated that. The game ended the way they did with a performance like that. But that's what happens when you only got six hits. And no walks. You had six base runners, aside from a few errors that the Pirates made. That's not a good... That That's bad. That's bad. I mean, it's not even a base runner in any. That's not good. Mr. Aiken coming in again. Eighth inning now. One full inning pitch. No hits, no runs, no walks. No strikeouts. So a little... Worse performance than some of the other ones because he didn't strike anybody out, but also he didn't allow anybody to get on. Yeah, I mean, that's a great performance to me. 
Mr. Cano, again, because, well, Kimbrell got his first save Friday, and then he was in there with a tie game for Saturday's game, so you're not going to pitch Kimbrell three days in a row, which is fair. Cano, not a great performance by Mr. Cano. Two-thirds of an innings pitched, two hits, two runs, one earned run, and one walk. To a certain extent, I mean, this almost goes back to, you know, Grayson Rodriguez. If you don't send Grayson Rodriguez out there for the seventh inning and you send Kulam out there, does Kulam get through the innings with, get through the inning and, cause you see here in the seventh, uh, this is the one run that Grayson Rodriguez gives up, right? You take that off the board, and again, we're saying we're just assuming that the run doesn't score there. It's five to one Orioles. Do you use Kimbrel? No, probably not. So, therefore, you have Kimbrel available for Saturday and Sunday. Again, hindsight. And potentially, if you just go to Kulam here. Again, you have Bauman available. So maybe you're not, I don't know, panicking maybe. Hell, maybe this is the point because it's not like Kanoe had been used up either. Maybe put Bauman in this situation. Basically what happened was, and it really came down to like the last play. And that's really what it was. Uh, he did allow... I mean, as you can see, I mean, walked one and two hits. So, again, with bases loaded, but with one out already, ball hit up the middle. Gunnar Henderson snags it. He's right about where the second base bag is. Touches it both with his glove and his throwing hand because he was all over on the ground and stuff. Tries to get up because if he can get the out at first base, Completing the double play, then the game's over and the Orioles win, even though the run had already crossed crossed the plate. The runner wasn't able to advance at first base. So he just, you know, he lets it, he just lets the ball go. Just uncorks a, a pitch. I mean, not a pitch. Just slings it over there because it was somewhat of a slow hit ball and the runner is like almost at first base. You can almost equate it to a football game, you know, field goal would tie it, but a touchdown could win the game for you. So what do you do? Do you go for the tie or do you go for the win? It's essentially what Gunnar Henderson, the decision that went through Gunnar Henderson's mind at that point. Do we go for the tie or do we go for the win? He went for the win. And maybe it's ill advised, maybe it wasn't, but... Especially to a certain extent, because even if the his throw was you know closer to first base, because he he almost completely missed Mountcastle over there. Mountcastle barely had a chance to catch the ball at all. The runner might have actually been safe. I'm not even sure that he would have had the out. Really, like the runner might have actually been safe. So. No, really, don't know if it was really even worth throwing the ball. And really, that's how they lost. Because the ball went out of play. More runners were able to move up and then the winning run essentially crossed because of a ball out of a play, out of play error. Which is disappointing. But... <sighs> Was at the same time that Dean Kramer learns how to throw the baseball from the pitcher's mound to second base. I mean, he can throw the ball from the pitcher's mound to home plate pretty well. But the shorter distance, I guess, you know, it's got him confused. Which isn't uncommon for pitchers, but at the same time, I don't know. You got to figure it out, man. So, very sad. Come to the schedule so you can look at the visual here. See a green W here and two red L's over here. So, first series loss of the year for the Baltimore Orioles. 
see, I'm getting back into it. I'm coming to the schedule to wrap up the game. I'm not going to talk about any articles. I haven't really noticed anything of noteworthy for me anyway. Here, coming to the schedule to wrap up this video. Very disappointing that third series of the year results in a lost series. Hopefully, and as you can see, Orioles headed to Boston. Off day today, Monday. Series in Boston starts on Tuesday. And from what I've heard, this was something that bothered me and I think is worth noting. Allegedly, and I guess I probably should know this for sure, but however, the, this is the, uh, Tuesday's game will be the Red Sox home opener. So the Red Sox had to wait to, for the fourth series of the year to get a home game. That's, I don't know, that's not acceptable. That's ridiculous. Third series of the year? Okay, maybe. Fourth series of the year? You still haven't had a home game? What? What kind of ridiculous ass nonsense is that? Who's making this schedule? Because especially if you're the Orioles, okay, you got the gift and you got to have opening day be at home. But now you've had to go on the road for now two opening days by the other team. You would expect a little more juice in the opposing locker room, right? You would think that the Pirates would get a little extra juice for their home opener. You would expect the Red Sox to get a little extra juice for their home opener. And for as a whole, for the opening series, to a certain extent, might have led to why the Orioles lost. Of course, very close games. I mean, you put that at Camden Yards, and it probably goes the other way. So, you might say the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Baltimore is pretty evenly matched teams. We'll see what the Red Sox are do are going to do. They have been pitching pretty well this year. So Tuesday's game with the Red Sox being a home opener, it's going to be it's it is scheduled for two ten. See what the weather's like. Day game to start the series, and then we're going to. Seven, ten games for Tuesday, for Wednesday and Thursday. Not 6.30 games, not 7.05 games, 7.10 games. It's weird. The start times for some of these games. And you see, we go down a list more, 6.35. Okay, I don't know. Pick one, man. 7.05 or 6.35. And then, oh, 7.10. Weird. Weird. It's like they're, they're randomly deciding. Uh, 410, 412, 405. Wow, really? However, uh, and as you can see, there will be no off day between the Red Sox series and the Milwaukee Brewers series, so I will have to get in here to my desk real early. Not necessarily early, but I got to, you know, speed the process up a little bit just to make sure I can get the... My next video, next edition of Rhino's Orioles Report will happen on Friday. On Friday. There it goes. Keep saying on Friday. Will be Friday, but I got to get it out early. I want to get it out before the start of the next series. That's going to, yeah. So that's, that's going to do it for this edition of Rhino's Orioles Report. Next edition will be Friday, hopefully before the series between the Milwaukee Brewers and the Baltimore Orioles. <sighs> Yeah, that's it. I am the Angry Rhino. Please like and subscribe. This is Birdland.